Mark chapter 2, verse 15 through 17 reads as follows. And it came to pass that as Jesus sat at meat in his house, many publicans and sinners sat also together with Jesus and his disciples, for there were many, and they followed him. And when the scribes and Pharisees saw him eat with publicans and sinners, they said unto his disciples, How is it that he eateth and drinketh with publicans and sinners? When Jesus heard it, he said unto them, They that are whole have no need for of the physician." But they that are sick, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, doing, doing, doing of his most holy word. This morning I want to talk to you use as a title these words, uh, attack, attack of the church snobs, the attack of the church snobs. He's saying that I believe, I believe, I truly believe that God has called us so much more. We want to become everything. I, y'all, what God has for me, I want all of it. But even the fact that we are having to go through and spend the extra time uh, uh, gathering it to ourselves, getting an understanding, lets us know something, lets us know that something, something is happening in the church. Tell us, preacher. It's almost, y'all, it's almost like, like something that has come out of a movie script. Something out of Hollywood. Something like Amityville Horror. Y'all know y'all saw it too. Y'all done turned all hyper holy on me. But I, something I remember from, from when I saw it, and I'm gonna admit it even standing right here, That there was a line, there was a tag at the beginning of the movie that tried to make it even more eerie. And it said this, the following is based on actual events. Only the names, location, and events have been changed. And I remember when it was all over, I said, no, that's way too crazy to be real. But, but what we are dealing with is like a movie, a movie y'all about Christians, Christians who mutated, uh, 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 it, 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 they mutated into church snobs. Church snobs that, that were wreaking havoc in the body of Christ. In this text, in this text, the scribes and the Pharisees were being temple snobs. They were being temple snobs. They saw Jesus eating with the low down, dirty, degenerate tax collectors and some other sinners. As far as they were concerned that these were the kind of people that God, when he created mankind, took the time and the effort to give some the ability to form the stank face. Uh-huh. 
passion. These did not go and have a talk with Jesus. They went and talked about Jesus to some other folks. Because y'all, that's what the snobs do. What am I trying to get you to understand? If we want to be great church members, then you're going to need to understand and recognize that in the church, even today, there are still sinners and there are still snobs. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now the sinners, the sinner in the church is expected. The sinner in the church is expected. Why? Because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Church snobbery, however, on the other hand, church snobbery, I just made that word up. <laughs> it, it is a mutation. It is a mutation in certain church members. A mutation, a mutation. Uh, Peter Parker was bitten by a spider. Uh -huh. And because of that, he turned into a mutant that you know as Spider-Man. Right. Yeah. In Marvel Comics, any other and the otherwise regular human being who has inherited the X gene right. is a mutant who can become one of the X-Men. Yes, Why? Because of his or her supernatural ability to have these powers that other folk don't have. Well. Why? They are mutants. Any person who says that they love Jesus but has developed the ability to look at someone with the stank face well. has been transformed, mutated into a church snob. Right. And they too are mutants. I just imagine, I just imagine this movie. This movie that we are entitled in the attack of the church snobs. All right. Scene one. Scene one is entitled The Snobs Arrive. Mm -hmm. In this scene, everything starts out normal and right until the snobs arrive. Okay. Jesus said this, he said this, in a conversation that started with a question. Mm -hmm. Who do men say that I am? And when he got to Peter, Peter said, thou art the Christ, yes. the son of the living God. And Jesus looked back at him, speaking of himself, he said, he said, and thou art Peter, but upon this rock, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. I will build my church, and this church will be so powerful. Yes. This church will be so strong. Uh -huh. This church will have such staying power yes. that even the very gates of hell shall not be able to prevail against it. Yes. The yes. church. The church is, uh, the Greek word we use is, is the ecclesia. Uh -huh. They are a called out assembly. Assembly of those who have been called out of the darkness into his marvelous light. Yes. Yes. He says, my body will be an amalgamation of baptized believers, yes. sinners yes. who have been saved by grace. Uh -huh. All have sinned and 
come short of the glory of God, but I will offer them sanctuary. I offer them a place to come. I'll invite them to come unto me because they've been, uh, they, they've labored and are heavy laden. And when they come to me, they can find rest yes, yes. unto their souls. Yes. In me, yes. he says, in me, they can find peace right. because I am the great I am. I am the great head of the church. And because of that, you, sinner man, don't have to worry because I've already overcome yes, yes. the world. <laughs> mm -hmm. And in scene one, in scene one, the church, the church shared in God's hatred of sin. Now I can imagine the close-up now goes close-up of God. If you could see him, there would be a close-up of God. And we would see God hates sin. God hates sin. God hates sin, but he sure enough loves the sinner. Yes, And then the camera would shift, shifts to man. That's when the church snobs start to arrive. All right. That's where the mutation would begin. You see, some church folk have difficulty separating their disgust for the sin from a disgust from the person. Right. Sometimes if a person would come into the church straight out of prison, they come in and they sit next to some of us. Stank face. <laughs> Sometimes somebody might come in off the streets, still high on drugs, well. still reeking of alcohol. Uh -huh. And when they sit next to us, stank face. Someone might have lived a homosexual lifestyle. Well, they walk into the sanctuary, uh -huh. sit down next to you, stink face. Some church folks have difficulty separating their disgust for the sin and they form a disgust for the sinner. Yes, yes, say that, now somebody might say, wait a minute now. What, what, what my concern was not so much about what they did. My concern was about how they smelled. And, and when a person says that, then they understand, they, they point out that they really didn't quite understand. They don't quite understand what Jesus did for them. You, you see, you, you can't sit next to somebody because you think they don't smell good. Right. And can I tell you something? Sin stinks to God. That's right. That's right, preacher. Sin reeks to God. Sin is so repulsive to God that he won't even look on it. But while you were yet sinners, yes. while we were yet sinners, yes. Yes. while we still reeked of the stench of sin, uh -huh. Christ died for us. Yes. 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 That's where the church knob shows up and the screen fades to black. That's the end. 
of scene one. Scene two starts with the title, The Attack. In, in this scene, the, the church snobs initiate their brutal attack on the church. And, and, and yeah, they strategically, strategically attack the church from the inside. Oh, Jesus talked about this in a parable. He talked about it in a parable. If, if you want to read it, you can look in Matthew chapter 13. I'm going to read it to you from the Message Bible and, and until you get the, the essence of the story. Listen, he said this. Uh, and he told another story. God's kingdom is like a farmer who planted good seed in his field. That night, while his hired men were asleep, his enemy sowed thistles all through the wheat and slipped away before dawn. When, when the first green shoots appeared and the grain began to form, the thistles showed up too. The farmhands uh, came to the farmer and said, Master, that was clean seed you planted, wasn't it? Uh, where did these thistles come from? He answered, some enemy did this. Yes, yes. The church snobs have been planted in the church by the enemy to attack the church from the inside, yes. to make it an inside job. Uh -huh. Their mission, their mission is to change the church from a hospital for sinners to a hotel for saints. All right. To change it from a hospital for sinners to a hotel for saints. They are the hospital. The hospital is where folks go because there's something wrong. The hospital is where sick folk go to get better. At the hospital, in one room, you, you, you might have somebody who's in pain. Well. In another room, you have somebody who is troubled. Yes. In another room, you have someone who's crying. And very possibly, in another room, you have someone who's dying. Uh -huh. in, in a hospital, people handle their, their situation differently. Some people uh, handle their situation by crying. Uh -huh. Some people deal with their situation by being angry. And some people may do what we might call crying, whining, and complaining. But y'all, that's just what happens to people when they're in the hospital. Yes, sir. The church is a hospital for sinners. That's right, that's right. The church is a hospital for sinners. This is where people who by their own admission are here because their life is all jacked up. Yes, yes. And they come here to get better. And then people call us hypocrites. They call us hypocrites because we got some of the same people in the church on Sunday morning that was at the club on Saturday night. They call us hypocrites because some of y'all's name and picture is on the high rollers wall of fame on the riverboat. Say that, please. And, and, and some of y'all, some of y'all's have some words in your vocabulary <laughs> that they will not permit you to use on HBO, Cinemax, or Showtime. <laughs> so they call us hypocrites. Some of them call us hypocrites and then they leave the church. Well. 
Leave the church in the huff. But this is a hospital. That's right. That's right, preacher. And you know what? If you're going to leave the church, and if you're going to leave a church in the huff, then here's what I say. I don't accept you calling me a hypocrite if you stop sending your child to that orthodontist. You see, when you go to the orthodontist, everybody sitting in the waiting room, all them kids got jacked up teeth too. That's right. So you got to apply the same standard to the orthodontist. In fact, in fact, don't go to your podiatrist anymore. That's right, preacher. Say it, say it. Because everybody in the waiting room at the podiatrist, podiatrist's office got bad feet. Uh -huh. <laughs> so look, look, if you, if your teeth are messed up, if your teeth are crooked, you go to the orthodontist. If your feet are bad, then you go to the podiatrist. Yes. And if your life is all jacked up, yes. Yes. then you need to be going to the place where sick people go to get better. Yes. Yes. That's what the church is for. Uh -huh. But the church knob doesn't want the church to be a hospital for sinners. The church knob wants the church to be a hotel for saints. Because mm -hmm. the church knob doesn't want to deal with people's pain. Don't want to deal with people's troubles. Don't want to deal with their sickness. Don't want to deal with crying folk. Don't want to deal with angry folk. Don't uh -huh. want to deal with people who are perceived to be whining and complaining all the time. Only thing that the church wants, uh, that the, the church now wants, is a hotel. Yes. They want a hotel, a place to go where they can rest, yes. where they can be served, and where they don't have to be inconvenienced by people who got problems in their lives. Yes. Do you know what happens if the church knob is successful? If the church knobs are successful in their attack, it would turn the church from being a vehicle that God uses to change the world to becoming a social club. That's right. We would just become a social club where we would be getting hung up on very trivial matters like what shade of blue are we wearing to this evening's affair? All right. ah, the attack, the church knob attacks and the scene turns black. And the final scene opens up. This this final scene is simply entitled Hope. See, after the church knobs have invaded the church, there's still hope mm -hmm. that one day we can live in a snob free society. Yes, yes, yes. So the parable in Matthew 13, it, it went on to say this look, um, said, the farmhands came to the farmer and said, Master, was that clean seed you planted? Where did these thistles come from? He answered, some enemy did this. The farmhands asked, should, should we weed out the thistles? He said, no, if you weed the thistles, you'll pull up the wheat too. Let them grow together until harvest time. Then I'll instruct the harvesters to pull up the thistles and tie them in bunches for the fire, then gather the wheat and put them in the barn. Yes, yes, yes. What is that saying? It's saying, it's saying sinners, the church snobs are going to be around for a while. Right. Uh -huh. 
If you came to church today thinking that you wouldn't encounter any snobs, you'll be disappointed. There are still some church snobs in the church today. Yes, yes, yes. And we're going to have to endure them until Jesus comes back. Yes. But it's also telling the snobs, snobs, the sinners are going to be around here for a while. And if you came to church today thinking that you wouldn't have to encounter any sinners, you'll be sad to know that at this church, uh -huh. even the pastor right. yes, yes. is a sinner. Uh -huh. Oh, but baby, I'm a sinner saved by grace. Amen. Oh, I'm not what I ought to be. Uh -huh. But thank God, I'm not what I used to be. Amen. Oh, I once was lost, but now I'm fine. Right. I once was blind, but now I see. Yes. You see, if any man be in Christ, yes. he's a new creature. Yes. All things are passed away, yes. and behold, all things, uh -huh. church, become new. Yes. So please, be patient with me. My God is not through with me yet. I'm still putting on some new stuff. Is there anybody today still putting on some new stuff? I can't speak for you. I just know about me. I got me a new walk. I got me a new talk. I got me a new song. And every morning, I get to wake up to some brand new mercies. And it's all because of Jesus. Because of Jesus, I got new hope for a new life. And you see, it was on a Friday. We started working on my new plan. On a Friday, on a hill called Calvary. Oh, they hung him high, stretched him wide, lifted him in his side. And his blood was flowing. It was flowing for me. They took my Jesus. Yes. They killed him on the cross. Yeah. He bowed his head. Yes. Gave up his life. Yes. Yes. And he died. Uh -huh. Oh, they put him in a bottle too. Uh -huh. Stay there all that Friday. Yes. Stay there all day Saturday. Yes. But Jesus got up with all of the power uh -huh. of heaven and earth in his hands. Yes, yes. And guess what, y'all? He lives. Yes. He lives. Yes. Even just every moment, he lives. I know that he lives because sometimes, late in the midnight hour, uh -huh. I get down on my knees and have a little talk with him. Yes. Tell him all about my trouble. Uh -huh. And church, he answers. He answers yes. by and by. Yes. Yes. Do you know that he lives? Yes. Is he real in your life? Yes. Won't he change? Won't he change your situation? Won't he change your circumstance? Yes. Won't he walk with you every step of the way? Because he promised yes. never to leave me. Never, never to leave me alone. God bless the church.